So, Benny, if you don't mind me asking, could you could you explain a little about a little bit on camera uh, for this Orlando Saw Fest about what you're doing here? I'm working on an Arduino lightning detector. Okay. It has a display on it. Really software in it. This is the interface for it to write the software. Okay. This one in particular is just an LED bar graph, but I do have the software for it on the computer. Okay. And I'm just trying to get the LED to work at the moment. Ah. These are Motorola electromagnetic 5110s. That you get those they originally came out of cell phone design. Okay. Uh, the, the flip phones. Uh huh. They originally came out of flip phones. Oh, okay. Or what they were used for, what they were designed for. Over here. Okay. And then they adapted them for Arduino and Raspberry Pis. Oh. And a lightning. What is it a called? Lightning detector. Oh, so why do you need a lightning detector? Because it lightning and how far it is away. Oh, it can do that, huh? Yeah. It can detect up to about 15 miles. Very expensive. Hot damn. And which is good to know if you have a lot of electronics in your house. Okay. We're out on what we have is a field day where we're operating radios. Okay. So is this connected to a sensor or it has a sensor and then... The sensor is actually shielded. Uh, uh, roughly and either a 500 cage kilohertz or an 8, uh, 600 and something My kilohertz. Aircraft. Okay. And it receives we static those from the lightning discharge. Oh. And it senses, it but they senses by the small. Arduino and then goes to this, this table. Cool. Now I have a big machine. Is roughly. Huh. So basically the sensor senses the static right. and that that's analog and then it goes to the Arduino which turns it into a digital data and then well I think it's actually turned into digital data on the board oh okay cool so, uh, as there is no analog inputs for this device and the design okay by the way, if you want to get into Arduino, that's one of the best books to start with. Oh. Arduino for Ham Radio. Written by Glenn Popeil. And he is on Facebook. All right. Okay. Now, so unlike uh, Raspberry Pi, Arduino doesn't have an operating system with it, right? Well, it's an interpretive operating system. Can you explain that? Interpret. Oh. Type the code in, and it will begin running every time at the same place. Hmm. Where Raspberry Pi has to boot its operating system in. I see. This, this operating system is built, is embedded, as they're called. Okay. So, so when you turn it on, it just works. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've built a lot of devices. I've built uh, temperature, humidity, and voltage sensors for the back of my car because I had a battery radio system back there. Okay. I didn't need the humidity and temperature sensor, but it was there. Okay. I also had a barometer. I didn't need that. It was just something to write. Okay. But I was sensing voltages, and then I had a little chip on there that let me transmit it via Bluetooth to my cell phone at the front of the car that we had to make around a wire. Cool. I've done a lot of little experiments like that. I built this one before, but it's not working now, so I'm going to start over. Ah, okay, okay. Well, that's cool. Okay. Good enough? That, that's very good information. Oh. Look at here. Steve, you got your uh, 3D printer all booted up? What are you making now? I can make one of, the, one, one of these. <coughs> one of these what? Point to it again? Oh, okay.
Oh. <coughs> it's heating up. How long does it take to heat up? Two more seconds. Okay. Number. He definitely will. <laughs> uh, I, I'm gonna say yes anyways, but now I feel more resilient. Give me a second So Steve, what's this right here? That's the, the feed. That's the material it's going to use. Oh, okay. So that's the material it's going to use to make one of these. Except it's a different material because that's right. transparent with dye in it and this is orange. Right. We have just finished the first layer. Hmm. Get really close. If you need more light, you can arrange that. Huh. And how long will it take to make that? Well, maybe five, ten minutes. Cool. I don't know very much about 3D printers, but would this hardware be considered open? Yes. Okay. I specifically picked this hardware because it was open. Oh, okay. There's a lot of 3D printers out there. Some are more open than others. This one is uh, fully open source. All the designs are available online. Okay. You could actually build it from scratch itself. You could probably pay more than if you bought it from a company that sells it. Gotcha. But then you can make your own upgrades and uh, yes, that's, customize. Yes, that's why I picked it, because uh, it has a very large open source community that has uh, published a lot of upgrades for it. Okay. Uh, all the parts can be replaced, uh, so when they wear out, I can buy replacement parts or buy upgraded parts or both. All right. I've already put a couple of upgrades on the printer. Okay. Uh, you can buy the printer with the upgrades for like a hundred dollars more, or you could buy it without the upgrades and for five dollars make them. <laughs> so. and, and actually, uh, a lot of people have taken this design and modified it, and the company tends to take the modifications that people have put out and upgrade, and so the next version of the printer will have those upgrades. So um, a lot of the upgrades that people say this printer needs, my printer came with them. Okay. So the company is very responsive to community input, uh, and they made it very easy to, to modify the panel. Okay. Cool. All right. So as those of us are learning, this is not just about Linux and installing operating systems. This is about hardware as well. Stay tuned for our next video on Linux Install Fest. Thank you. Bye-bye.